good morning students welcome to the subject on design of rcc structural elements cv52 i am dr gs suresh professor and head of the department civil engineering from national institute of engineering mysore uh, we will be teaching to you along with my colleagues dr g sarangapani mr chandradara M, dr mc nataraj and dr raviraj this course to you during this semester we will now have a look at what we see the contents of the course part a is having four units as you can see in the syllabus unit 1 is general features of reinforced concrete unit 2 is principles of limit state design and ultimate strength of rc section unit 3 is flexure and serviceability of limit state and then in unit 4 we teach design of beams this part will be dealt by myself and dr g saranga pani i will be covering to you unit 1 and unit 2 whereas dr saranga pani will be covering to you unit 3 and unit 4 part b consists of design of slabs in unit 5 design of columns in unit 6 and design of footings in unit 7 and design of staircases in unit 8 this part will be covered by my colleagues at sj college of engineering dr mc nataraj raviraj and chandradhara now we will have a look at the scheme of examination this scheme is well known to you in the earlier semesters same pattern is also followed in this subject part a consists of one question each from unit 1 to 4 and part b consists of one question from each unit of unit 5 to 8 now as usual let's have a look at what are the books we should study in this course we are giving the textbook as the one written by well known author dr p c vargis he is professor from iit chennai he has written the book on limit state design of reinforced concrete published by phi this is a very wonderful book which you can refer for most of the chapters or units in this subject we have also a very good book by dr m l gambhir it is also published by phi its title is fundamentals of reinforced concrete design then we have another book by pillai and menon again from iit chennai reinforced concrete design and this is uh, published by tata magra hill and we have another book by sn sina reinforced concrete design again it is been published by tata magra hill we have other books which is listed here by carve and shah then we have bhavikati book and then dr hejje shah which is also a very good book along with these books we have to refer to what is called as codes i will be telling to you codes short while after this that is called as bureau of indian standards as you have already been seen many products writing isi mark like that for any design it gives you the code that is given a number called as is 456 this is revised in the year 2000 that's why it is called is 456 2000 and some design handbook available to you it is called as sp 16 special publication 16 published by bureau of indian standards let me start with the first unit general features of reinforced concrete the objective to of today's class is to introduce you what is reinforced concrete what is code and handbooks properties of materials what are the different forms of structures and how do we consider the forces called as loads in the building friends all of you know what is a structure is which you have been introduced in structural analysis it is the one which resists the load without any appreciable deformation deformation to occur but it should be within the limit so that 
the people who use the structure will not get scared because of the deflection. The structure is assembled of individual elements. The elements are being classified as beams, columns, slabs, foundation, walls, etc. All this if you assemble it becomes a structure. Whenever a structure is subjected to external forces what we call it as the loads is required to be analyzed to get the internal forces within the structural elements. This is called as structural analysis. So, structural analysis as I have indicated here will help us to determine the forces and displacements. Displacement could be the lateral displacements or vertical displacements or rotations all this put together we call it as displacements. Then we have also the design process for the proportioning of the member. Deciding the size of a member like a beam having the width and depth is called as proportioning of the members. The analysis and design or a cyclic process you cannot do in a straight one step analysis and design it should be in the form of trial and error procedure which will be followed by this procedure. First before doing any design based on our experience we decide what should be the size of the members. This is called as preliminary design. Using the preliminary design we calculate the stiffness of the member say for example use moment distribution method for the structural analysis. What do you need in moment distribution method? You require stiffness then you require distribution factor. To do this you require the size of the member. For that we have to do the preliminary design. To do the preliminary design there are some thumb rules and also based on experience. For example, if the span of a beam is 10 meters I will consider the depth of the beam as 10 divided by some integer number like 20. That will give me an approximate depth of the beam. So, once I decide this I do the analysis of the structure. To do the analysis of the structure we have many methods which we have taught to you in structural analysis 1 and structural analysis 2. It depends on whether the structure is a determinate structure or indeterminate structure. We have the methods like slope deflection method, moment distribution method, Cornish method matrix method of structural analysis and now the recent one for last two decades is finite element analysis. So, what do we do with this structural analysis? We compute the forces, from the forces we compute the stresses and then the deformations. As I said earlier deformation means it need not be only deflection or horizontal displacement it also includes the rotation. So, once you find all this whether these things are within the permissible limit you compare the stresses with respect to permissible stress or the allowable stress. Also compare whether the deflection is causing any problem to the structure then you can decide whether the one which you have assumed the sizes are ok or not. If it is no then go back revise the section as I have indicated here you can revise the section and then go to structural analysis. Then you can come back to the computing of stresses and if the stresses are within the limits then here as I have said yes then come to the final design you decide the other parameters of the structure. I will come to the final design in this course later. Let us understand more about what is a structure, what are the forms of structure available in the universe. Friends we do lot of types of buildings, we call it as load bearing structures. For example, your residence might be built only out of the brick walls that is without having any RCC elements as beams and columns that we call it as load bearing structures. But most of the commercial buildings, multi-storied buildings do need 
some structural components like vertical member called column, horizontal member called beams and slabs. This if you put together, it is called as framed structures and continuous structure. The frame structure is generally used for buildings. If you have a triangulated structure called as trusses, we use it in the transportation that is the bridges, transmission towers, spacecrafts, aircrafts, etc. All this you can make with beams, columns and slabs. That is why we call it as a framing of the elements called as framed structures. Also, we need to provide along with the frames a continuous systems like the slab or if it is curved, we call it as shell. A curved slab is called as the shell or it may be a dome or we also call it as plates and whenever we are building any underground structure, we need to support the soil not to fall inside the building. That structure is called retaining wall. To retain the water, we build a wall called as dam. Then in thermal power plants, we use to condense the steam, we use cooling towers. All this comes under the continuous system. Shortly, I will show you some photographs of these structures. So, see here, you have all the three indicated here as the framed structures. If you can see on the left side, it is the finished building of the multi-storied building, probably it could be a hotel, it could be a commercial complex or it could be an office building. If you see it as a non-finished forum, when it is built, it looks like this having columns in the vertical direction, beams in the horizontal direction and in between the beam to make you to walk freely, we do what is called as the slab. Then right side you can see still the wall is not constructed, how the constructed work looks like is seen on the right side that is called the framed structure. This is a bridge. What is a bridge? Bridge is a structure which is built to transport the vehicles or human being from one bank to another bank of either a river or a sea or it could be any other water body. So, here you can see here the vehicle moves on this deck or what is called as the slab and this is a structure called as the truss in arch forum which transmits the load onto the pier here on the bank. So, this is a framed structure. The framed structure is very often used nowadays you have seen many towers used for your mobile, they are called as mobile towers. How is it made? It is made out of steel and it is in the form of triangulated. The one picture which I am showing you in these two is the transmission tower for your electrical power lines. This is a framed structure. Then the other forum which I told you is a continuous system. Right side figure which you can see is a dome made out of reinforced concrete. This is called as a continuous system because the system is in three dimension, that is why it is called continuous system. The structure name for this is shells or domes, what you can see here is also a dome and what you can see here is also shell. Now, here we can see on the left side different forms of the shell or dome which you can construct using reinforced concrete or any other material you can see on these sketches. This is another form of continuous system called as flat slab. A slab resting directly on column is called flat slab. Here you can see this is a vertical column made out of steel and the slab which is in two dimension is resting directly on the column is called as flat plate or flat slab. As I told you, to retain the earth, we require a wall. You can see here, the earth on the higher side should not fall to the downside. So, for this we use a wall made out of stone masonry here. This is called as retaining wall. 
the meaning of the retaining wall is it retains the soil on the upper side. So, this is on the lower side and that is on the upper side. So, this is the retaining wall. If you retain a water instead of earth, it is called as dam. So, you can see here students how the dam is constructed. You must have seen several dams around your city. It could be Karas dam or it could be Badra dam. Whatever the name we have given, we are retaining the water on the upstream side that is on the upper side of the wall and we release the water whenever it is required onto the downstream. So, you will study more on this in a subject called as irrigation structures or irrigation engineering. There you study about the dam. And this is a cooling tower used in thermal power plant. It is a continuous system made out of reinforced concrete, wherein we condense the steam into water in this cooling towers. But can we look only into picture and do the design of or analysis of a structure? It is not possible to do. When we write on the paper, or on the computer, we have to make some assumptions called as idealization. Idealization is simplification of a real structure. How we can simplify? If you remember in your strength of materials or mechanics of materials and in structural analysis, we used to write a beam with a single line. So, that is called as single line structure. Similarly, we can idealize the structure as a two dimensional structure. If you remember in the moment distribution method, we had used a frame. That frame is written as a portal frame. That portal frame is a two dimensional frame and this is known as the two dimensional idealization. Similarly, a frame idealized in three dimension is called a space frame or a space structure. You can also do the idealization with the real structure. You have built a structure, after building you have a doubt whether this building can withstand the loads. Then you test the structure, a part of the structure or the whole structure by applying the force before you make the users to occupy it that is called as the real structure testing. We can also make a small model in the laboratory and test it. So, idealization can be done as a model, but these two which I told you are very expensive. We cannot do for every structure, only for special structures we can do. We do have a regular structure tested with the time. So, we can make a mathematical model for this writing a structure in one or two dimension or three dimension on a paper or on a computer is called as mathematical idealization. So, that is what we have done in our structural analysis. So, friends I think I have explained sufficiently about what is a structure, what are the forms of structure how to idealize it. It is only an introductory requirement. I hope you have understood this in your earlier classes in structural analysis. My aim is to introduce you to the design of reinforced concrete structure. So, now I start the actual portion of this course that is unit 1 which we start with the as understanding the reinforced concrete. What is reinforced concrete? A concrete is a composite material made out of cement, aggregate, water and admixture. If you mix all this, it becomes a green material called as green concrete. If you allow it to set or harden for many hours, it becomes a hardened concrete. This looks like a stone after it hardens. 
So, concrete is nothing but a man made stone. This has got a very good property to take compressive stresses. The stress which is applied to make the change in dimension as a compression is called as the compressive stress. That means, there is reduction in the size is called compression, but it is very weak because it is made out of cement and aggregate. If you try to apply the tensile force, it breaks very easily. It is a very brittle material. So, in order to strengthen this in tension, we use what is called as steel reinforcement. So, a reinforcement added to the concrete in the portion where it is subjected to tension is called as reinforced concrete. I will explain this in detail later. First, let us understand the other aspects. In the modern times, concrete reinforced structures contains sometimes non-metal reinforcement. They are called as FRP, fiber reinforced plastic. This plastic is made as a reinforced bar, round bars and added, but it is still under R and D that is research and development that we are not covering in this course, because it requires more advanced research. Later, once it is being practically used, we will let you know about that in future. But let us try to only understand the reinforced concrete at present is 99 percent of the structures consists of only steel reinforcement and sometimes in special structures it is made out of stainless steel reinforced bars. For a strong and ductile and durable construction, the reinforcement which you use should have the following properties indicated here. It should have high strength, it should have a more durable and more elongation which is called as high tensile strain. When it is used as a composite material with concrete, whenever two people meet together we say they should have good bond. Like that we are using two people here, one is the man concrete, another man is the steel. These two when they want to be together to take up the stresses generated out of the load, it should have good bond. So, the steel should have good bond to the concrete. And also, these structures are subjected to change in temperature. During the change in temperature, either it may expand or it may contract. So, then thermally there must be a good compatibility. It should not happen that one material expands more, another material expands less, then there will be a deformation occurring at the junction of the two materials. So, that is why there must be a good thermal compatibility. And the structure which we build should last long, it should be durable. So, that is why with the environment we say the durability should be good with the concrete environment. The steel has got a disadvantage whenever it is exposed to oxygen or water, it corrodes. That means, it loses some of its material because of the corrosion. So, the concrete should not allow, that means the property of the concrete should not make the steel to corrode. So, it is not uh, the time to know more about the corrosion, you will learn that in your future days when you study the environmental engineering and also reinforced concrete structure too in your future classes at that time, we will let you know about the corrosion. Where do we apply the reinforced concrete to the structure? Which are the structures I have highlighted here? One is in the building. In the building, we can divide the building into two parts. One is called as the substructure, 
which is below the ground that is foundation what we call it as and the one above the ground is called as the superstructure. So, in this we use the reinforced concrete. I have also given details here about the substructure. The substructure is nothing but the footing or the foundation. Whereas, the superstructure consists of these components which you have studied well in your building construction. One is just above the ground is called plinth, then the vertical element to give you privacy what we call it as wall. We can use it in vertical member called as column, floors, we can use it for doors, windows, ventilators and to navigate from one floor to another floor we require what is called as stairs and also on the top of the building called as the roof. Here these are the application of reinforced concrete friends. Now, before we study more on the design aspects, let us try to understand this material which I am trying to explain you for last 10 minutes that is the concrete and steel. To make the concrete we require sand, we require the aggregate called as broken stone and also we use for building clay, rock natural fibers. The man made materials are bricks, tiles, cement concrete, concrete blocks, plastic, steel and glass. These are all used in the reinforced concrete. So, let us try to understand what is concrete is. You have already done a course in your fourth semester called as concrete technology there a detailed understanding has been done by you on how to make a concrete. This photograph shows the material we use. We use the cement, broken stone called as coarse aggregate, then we use the sand which is called as fine aggregate, water and in the modern days for last three decades we are using a chemical called as admixture. This representation shows about 3 to 6 percent of air is there in the concrete, 10 to 12 percent is the cement, 14 to 18 percent is water, 20 to 27 percent is sand and 40 to 45 percent is aggregate. These two aggregates are responsible for giving the compressive strength to the concrete. Here another uh, illustration of what are the materials we use, water is shown here, crushed rock is shown and also chemical admixture which I told you to improve the properties of the concrete we use this chemical admixture. Admixture itself is a big subject which should be studied, but briefly I will tell you the types of admixtures which has been taught to you in your course on concrete technology. That is accelerating admixture. To make the setting faster, we use accelerating admixtures. Then we use to make the concrete light air entraining admixture. Then we use the admixture which is called as water reducing admixture and set controlling admixture. And we also used mineral admixtures called as finally divided mineral admixtures and non slump admixtures. We use polymers, we use high range water reducing admixtures called as HRWRA. They are all called as plasticizers. The water reducing admixture, why we should reduce the water? Concrete, as you know, is inversely proportional to or the strength of the concrete is inversely proportional to the quantity of water. Less the water you add, greater the co compressive strength you get. So, that means to say to add less water and make it more workable, that means easy to mix is called workable, you need an admixture. I will come back to reinforced concrete. 
the concrete which you use in the reinforced concrete has got a very good compressive strength, but very less tensile strength. The reason is the aggregates are binding by the cement. So, when you try to bring it apart, this will break at the junction. The tensile strength of the concrete is one tenth of the compressive strength. This approximately, it depends on so many other factors. It is not the course where we, I can teach you about the tensile strength. I will only briefly go through what you have studied earlier in your concrete technology. In most of the structural elements, the st tensile stresses do occur, whether it is a compression member or a tension member or a bending member called as flexural member, tension is going to occur in the members. In this case, we have to introduce reinforcing bar called as rebar. In future, I will be referring to the word called as rebar. Rebar means reinforcement bars. This is embedded in the concrete. If the concrete is set well around the bars, then the corrosion possibility is very less. So, you should see that there is sufficient gap between the outer portion of the concrete and to the steel which we call it as cover. If you give a good cover to the reinforcement bar, then the possibility of corrosion to reinforcement is less. The composite material reinforcement, reinforced concrete should have good bond between steel and concrete which I have already told you. This illustration shows how a beam behaves. It is a simply supported beam subjected to a point load at mid span. Because of application of the center load or concentrated load, the beam has bent into this called as sagging. These two are the supports and I have considered the center portion in this sketch. This indicates how the stresses are formed. As you know, when it is sagging, the top layers of the simply supported beam is subjected to compression and the lower portion of the beam is subjected to tension. So, the top is subjected to compressive stress, the bottom is subjected to tensile stress. In between, there is a layer called as neutral layer called as neutral surface which I have shown you here. Sigma C, sigma is the one which is used for the stress and the suffix C is used for compressive stress and suffix T is used for tensile stress. So, this is when the member behaves in the initial stages of the loading. We will see more about this in the future classes. Let us try to understand how a reinforced concrete behaves with this sketch. The one sketch A which I have shown is a simple concrete which does not have any reinforcement at all. So, as I told you, the concrete is very weak in tension at a small load which you have applied as a concentrated load at mid span will crack at the bottom and at a smaller load it breaks. This is called as cracking load or cracking moment or the stress in the concrete is called as modulus of rupture. Friends, you must have tested in the lab the concrete tensile strength with this type of testing. If you want to improve the load carrying capacity, then as I have indicated in sketch B, you can see there is reinforcement introduced at the bottom and this is called as reinforced concrete and this will induce only small crack at the bottom of the steel and then it will the tensile reinforcement takes care of the stresses at the bottom which is the tensile stress. And you can see on the third that is C figure, where I have shown that it is not a brittle behavior as in the case A, it is the ductile behavior. So, ductile means what? The structure which can deflect more before it fails is called as ductile behavior. 
This is the sketch of a reinforced concrete vertical member which is subjected to compression force called as column. You can see the four bars at the corners are provided because if this structure is subjected to bending moment, the tensile stresses are likely to occur at the outer surface. And to keep these bars intact, we are using what is called as transverse steel or a tie. Sometimes we also refer to this as stirrups in case of the beams. So, friends here I have shown where we should provide the reinforcement. You can see there is a bending of the continuous beam here. In the first case it is hogging. So, tension is occurring on the top. In the second span it is bending as a sagging. Tension is occurring at the bottom and the tension in the third span is occurring at the top. So, these two are hogging and this is sagging. So, wherever the tension occurs there we have to introduce the reinforcement. So, this is how the bending moment diagrams look. This is showing the hogging and this is showing the sagging. So, I have introduced the reinforcement accordingly. Here for the sagging portion of this I am introducing the reinforcement at the bottom. For hogging I am introducing the reinforcement at the top. So, in case of sagging bending moment I require the steel reinforcement at the bottom and wherever the hogging is occurring there I require the reinforcement at the top because it is going to crack there. In case of a cantilever beam if you remember your hogging occurs at the top that is means I have to introduce the reinforcement in a cantilever beam at the top. If it is a simply supported beam the tension is going to occur at the bottom. So, I have to introduce the reinforcement at the bottom of the beam. So, friends let us try to understand when the beam behaves elastically in the initial stages of the load how the stresses occurs in this case. First you apply the load if the concrete does not crack initially we call it as uncracked section. At that time the beam behaves as a homogeneous material like steel which we have taught to you in strength of materials. All the equations taught to you in your strength of material course that is bending stress is equal to m by z is the stress that can be applied. But if you increase the load the concrete is going to crack then it becomes a non-homogeneous material. In that case you cannot use the elastic theory that is for homogeneous material. We have to use what is called as composite section theory. Anyway I will not go to the detail of calculations at this stage. I will show you in the next class what do we do with the design. Friends you can also see here the other components of the structural system we use in re the real life. This is called as a slab. What is a slab? It is a member which is distributed across the length and width of a structure. It could be flat or it could be sloping. This is the two slabs which I have shown here. Based on the ratio of length and breadth we can classify the slab as one way slab or two way slab. In unit 5 you will be understanding about the design of the slab. Now, I will not go into detail. You can also see a cantilever slab here which will be subjected to hogging bending moment and the tensile stresses occurs at the top which is indicated in this sketch. This is a framed structure. You can see in the plan on the right side wherein you can see the dark hatched portion called as the column and the horizontal members are called as the beams and then we have the wall at the edge. This put together is called as a framed structure and you can see here a beam and slab put together is called as beam slab structure and also if you have the column along with the slab 
that is called as the flat slab. And on the right side, the idealization of this structure with two dimension, which we were using very often in the earlier days to the computers was the analysis of plane frame. We were doing this as an assumption. You can see here a very well built reinforced concrete structure in Abu Dhabi and this is made out of reinforced concrete structure completely. It is a hotel building. You can build to any shape you want. The advantage of concrete is if you form a forum work to any shape you want, you can cast the concrete to that shape. That is the advantage of reinforced concrete. I have also shown how it behaves when it is subjected to lateral load. The load which is applied perpendicular to the vertical column is called lateral load. That means it is acting parallel to the earth surface. How the structural system behaves is shown in this sketch. We have other structural systems which I have already shown you. This is shows how the beam and slab put together looks to transfer the forces from slab to beam, beam to column. This is the system called as beam supported slab. This is how we show this in the sketches idealization. We do this as a column and beam slab structure. Reinforced concrete structure system also can be having the grid of beams called as grid structure which is shown here. This is consisting of two perpendicular system of beams spaced at regular intervals and above that we put the slab. This is called grid system. This is another form of waffle slab what we call it as it is a grid system. Then this is called as the flat slab which is used in most of the malls nowadays which you have seen where the projection of the beam is not been so convenient to the user then we have to use this type of flat slab. And the flat slab if it has got a small drop around the column it is called as drop panel. And to support this drop panel, we use what is called as column capital, which is shown here. Then if you want to build a structure on a heavy beam like this called transfer girder, where the space between the column is very large like 20, 30 meters. And then you build the columns above the transfer girder, it is called as floating columns. This also you can have a reinforced concrete structural system. This is called as a tree type of uh, structure wherein the center column supports the whole structure as a cantilever which you can see the central core wall is there or a column is there at the center and then you have got all the cantilevering beams and on the top if you have a girder with regular interval of column it is called as virindial girder. These are all other types of uh, systems for horizontal forces to be resisted. We build very often wall called as shear wall around the staircase room to take care of the horizontal forces generated due to maybe wind or maybe due to earthquake. These are all other types of structural systems used for tall buildings which you have seen in most of the other countries more they are called as tube in tube or tube framed structures. So this is not the course where I can teach you about the tall buildings. This is another framed structure very often you can see for community water supply which is called as elevated water tanks. There you can see the top is a water tank holder and the bottom is the framed structure to transfer the forces. This is the water tank which you have seen in your places around. The, the first one on the left side of the screen you can see is called as a inch tank whereas the right side what you can see is called as a conical water tank. All this has got a vertical support they are called as either well or supporting columns. And we do require to design all this a guideline or a set of rules. A set of rules given by an agency appointed by government 
is called in India as Bureau of Indian Standards. This publishes the rules in the form of a book, it is called as a code book. To design, if you are given a table and some graph, it is called as a handbook. So, codes and handbooks are useful in designing the structure. The rules are always provided as a guideline for you. You need not exactly stick to that guideline. You can make a small changes, but you should be within the rules domain. What is done in codes? So, in India, we call it, call it as BIS or BS code, Bureau of Indian Standard Code. The code which is referred to reinforce concrete is numbered as IS 456, published or revised in the year 2000. So, you should refer to IS 456 2000 and the design handbook for reinforced concrete is special publication called as SP 16. And also all these codes put together along with the reinforced concrete is called National Building Code, which was published in 2005 that is the revised National Building Code can be referred for various aspects of a building. These codes and handbooks ensures safety and gives the design formula and uniformity among the designers. To refer to the forces which I call it as load, you can refer to a code called as IS 1, sorry it is IS 875 1987. It is published in 2 to 5 parts that is part 1 to part 5 which is called as the code of practice for design loads for buildings and structures. Then we have the special publications SP 16 for design, SP 23 for concrete mixes how to make the concrete that design aspect is given in SP 23. SP 24 gives explanation on IS 456, but it is for the code which is published in 1978. SP 24 gives the explanatory handbook and SP 34 gives handbook on concrete reinforcement and detailing. In other countries which I have shown here in US, it is American Concrete Institute 318 in 2011 in UK BS 8110 like this you have different countries codes which I have indicated here. So friends, I will tell you about the loads and other things in the next class. Before that, we will make a summary of uh, what we have studied today. I will tell you all these forces in the next class and now I make a summary. Reinforced concrete is a concrete reinforced with rebars which I have already explained to you. Concrete is a material manufactured using cement aggregates, water and admixture. Concrete is strong in compression and weak in tension. Steel used in the form of a bar is used in structure as rebar. It has got a very high strength and the guidelines of IS 456 2000 is used for reinforced concrete. Different forms like frame structures, bridges, water tank, etc are constructed using RC. Reinforced concrete structure should resist the loads acting on it. Dead load, live load, wind load, etc. will be taught to you in the next class. Have a good day. Thank you. We will learn more about reinforced concrete tomorrow that is on the 7th. Thank you.